Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at the file sharing service and I'm going to show you this week how to connect to your file shares from remote computers. So now that we've got all of our file shares set up, then how do we actually get these file shares to mount on our computers? And then how do we monitor those within the file sharing service? So if you remember from last time, we're inside uh, file sharing here. Uh, I went through showing you how to set up permissions, how to set up your file shares. Uh, we set up a home folders section for our uh, home folders to be stored on, for those that will have their home folders stored on the server. And uh, we started the service and got everything running. So now what I want to do this week is show you uh, how to actually mount your file shares and then also how to actually set those up to be auto mounted so that they'll show up every time you reboot your computer. And then I'll show you how you can monitor what users are using what shares and uh, how to monitor that information. So let me just put the uh, server uh, application down and I've got a screen share here uh, with uh, one of my computers on my network. And so what I'm going to do is show you how to uh, actually connect to your file share. So here I am on, on my machine here. And what you want to do is go to the Finder window. And you want to click Go. And you're going to say Connect to Server. And what will happen is you get this Connect to Server dialog. And within here, you want to put in the protocol you're using, followed by a colon and two backslashes, and then your server's host name. So in this case, I'm going to use AFP. You can also use SMB if you want to. Uh, on that and uh, basically whatever you put in there uh, then you would put your your server you know server.example.com or whatever it is for you uh, once you've set that up you just click connect and what it's going to do is give you this bar here shows you connecting to server and then this window comes up asking for your username and password so let me put that information in right now okay when you're done with that you click connect and what it'll do is start to connect to your server. And then once it does, it shows all of the different file shares that are available. And so I can mount any one of these that I want onto my uh, remote machine. And so in this case, let's just, mount, uh, let's just mount the documents for a minute. Let's just do that folder and say OK. And so now what's happened is, is it's actually mounted the documents folder, as you can see here. And these are all of the different uh, documents that are showing on my, on my server's documents folder. And so I've got that mounted on my machine now, and it shows up as a drive, and so now I can access it however I want to access it. But you can see that it's sitting right there. So that's how you would go and mount any one of the shares that you've got uh, on your server that you want to have on your computer. Now, what I can also do if I want to, if I want this, let's say I want this to show up every time I boot my machine so that it will auto mount for me and make sure that it's connected, is what I can do is go into System Preferences. Let me just pull this up because I want to show you how this works. And what you would do is go to your users and groups area right here. And this brings up uh, your users and groups screen. And then go to your login items right here on this tab. And all I would need to do, let me just move this over a little bit here so we can see that. All I need to do then is drag this file share into this window. And what it's going to do is add it right here to my list of, uh, of available volumes. And next time I reboot my machine, it's going to actually automatically uh, mount that particular file share. Now it will still come up with my uh, username and password prompt, but then I don't have to remember to actually mount it. It's just going to happen for me every time I restart my machine. Uh, if you ever want to remove any of these, you can just come in here, highlight it, and then just basically click a minus, and it will remove it from those lists. So I just wanted to show you how you do that because that will be uh, pretty convenient uh, for those of you that need to have these shares showing up on your machine every time you mount them. So that's how you would get those up there. So now that I've mounted this particular share and I've got that up and running, uh, let's go back to the server and I want to show you uh, what it looks like on the server side when you have a file share mounted. Okay, here we are back on the server and as you can see I've got uh, connected users. It shows one. So let me just show you what that looks like and you can see here now that basically uh, I've got the share that I've mounted is showing up here. It shows my username. It shows the address that it's connected to. It shows how many minutes I've been connected. Now I just connected to it, so this time will go up as I, uh, as I keep that share mounted. And then it shows me the type of uh, protocol I use to actually mount that file share. And so if you've got a network of a bunch of people that are using your file shares, you will see all of those users show up here in this uh, area right here. And you can see the IP address that's been assigned to that machine on your local network. And that, this way you can monitor who's actually connected to your server and how long they've been connected. 
Uh, the other thing you can do in here, uh, which is nice, is you can actually disconnect users if you want to. So if you find users that have been connected for too long, or maybe someone forgot to disconnect a share, and for some reason, whatever they're doing is taking a bandwidth, or you didn't want this person to be on that share, this could be kind of a nice way also to monitor for people you don't want connected to your shares, and uh, it would let you know who's on there. Uh, you could actually disconnect the person as well if you wanted to do that. If you just click this button here, it says, are you sure you want to disconnect the selected users? And I can say, yes, disconnect. And so it's going to go through the process of disconnecting. You see now it's disappeared, and I'm no longer connected. And so that share actually uh, disconnected from my machine. In fact, if I just, let me just pull up the file share here. And it says, basically, this file server has shut down. So I get this note saying, hey, sorry, I know you were connected to the share, but it, it's been shut down. You can't use it. And I say, OK, and then I'm done. So basically, that's how you would kick people off of your server if you didn't want them accessing certain files. They actually get a message that shows, hey, sorry, it's not there anymore. And it's a great way to keep the security going on uh, your server as well. So that's all I have uh, on file sharing. So hopefully between the, this screencast and the last one, you've been able to get that set up and running. Um, but I'll be back, back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.